Hey guys, Lenny Reed, down to my dealer products. I want to talk to you today about Cummins ISX 15 liter stuff. Skyler, why is this so big? Uh, this is out of a heavy duty application semi truck injector. Semi truck. Yes. There's a lot of those on the road. Correct. And a lot of those run ISX 15s. Yes, they do. So here we are. So Hallelujah. we've been doing a lot of yes. research, mm -hmm. making tools, building tools, buying tools. Yep. Running injectors. Yep. You've got a set here right now. Correct. And you've ran them for flow. Yep. And I mean, it's a big truck and they always shake and they always rattle and Everybody just kind of thinks that's normal. Yeah. What do you find for flow deviation on these ISX 15s? So on the big inflow, like full delivery on VL, yeah. full delivery. Yep. yep. Full delivery. I got injectors ranging from 123 all up to about 160 mm's. And that's as is. We haven't opened these. We haven't touched them. This is customer brought them in and I put them in the test stand to see what they did. So that's a huge deviation. That 30 cc, yeah. 33 cc's. That's huge. Of delivery at wide open throttle, which kind of explains like, I've, you know, big trucks, they like you get into a pickup truck today and they're smooth. You can't hardly tell if they're gas or diesel anymore. But the semi truck world, owner operator or just an operator of a, a lease truck or a, a company owned truck, those guys are getting in them and they all shake, they all kind of rattle and they all roll down the road. Nobody's ever been too picky about it. But we have modified two sets in the past. Yes. And we did that for a shop. Uh, Perkins wanted some stuff done. And they claimed that they noticed like a difference just in the parking lot before it ever even left. Yep. So now that we have this machine yep. and we've got raid shape, what have you seen for... So raid shape, real quick, is basically solenoid is on. And then when you finally see pressure in the distribution line to count how many cc's how fast do you get pressure if there's a spike high or low in that pressure so we're actually getting a picture almost a dynograph or say of what the injection rate looks like yeah yeah basically what does the rate shape on a set of injectors out of this truck look like it is it is not that good yeah uh, i will have some blown ups out of this so you guys can see it better but Beginning of injections, pretty good on them, honestly. The beginning looks really consistent. Yeah, very consistent. But at peak injection pressure, peak injection, not no. consistent. And end of injection is rare. It's really, really bad. Um, so and basically, what we're going to go in and, and do is try to modify them to get every single injector basically fall on the same injection rate. And in theory, we can get a smoother, cleaner running engine. So theoretical. When we look at the front of this graph, beginning of injection, this is this looks good. But at peak injection pressure, not looking very good. End of injection is when the injector actually closes and quits distributing fuel. A lot of the problems that we're going to see out of these is because the end of injection, there's a massive difference in, uh, hey, you and your guys, how many microseconds difference that we got there? Uh, in the EOI, end of injection, EOI. We're going to look at this graph. I can do it a lot better here. You can blow it up there. Yeah. So the reason why EOI or end of injection is important is because once you tell the solenoid to quit delivering fuel, there's a lag time when that actually stops. And that lag time, if it's very, very sharp and very precise on every single injector, the piston is going to see the same cylinder pressure. It's going to be forced down the hole at the same rate. But if the next injector is 200 or 300 microseconds slower to EOI, then that piston is going to be making a different power rate and a different power shape in the same exact motor. So rate shape is, it's not measuring CCs delivered. We're doing that as well. But uh, rate shape is just measuring how fast we're getting that EOI from the beat, or from beginning of injection. Yeah, and I'm going to say end of injection probably ranges about two to 300 microseconds. So two to 300 microseconds is what the difference is in time when the injector is being told to shut off from one injector to the other injector. Now, the reason that's such a big problem on something like this is because 
that is being taken over 1200 microseconds or a thousand uh, uh at a thousand microseconds so 1000 microseconds of injector on time we have a 300 microsecond deviation in the end of injection yep that's why that's it's, why they don't that's, that's why they're not that smooth yep so we're gonna fix nozzle flow rate we're gonna we've got tools coming yep so we'll be able to doctor these things up really really well because they are it's kind of like a Cummins 5.9 or a Cummins 6.7, but it's a lot bigger. And the needle valve assembly is totally different. They're, they're just, it's a Cummins injector. It's not a Bosch. Yep. So that being said, with all the new stuff that we've got, we'll be able to tear these things apart. We did have a mess up. Yes. And the mess up cost us an injector. So we've got a brand new injector coming for this guy. Because when we're learning and when we're trying new things, we're definitely going to mess some stuff up. So we've got one injector that potentially in two weeks, when we finally get all the tools for this thing, we could probably fix that injector up. But between now and two weeks, we need to get our customer back on the road as this guy wants to make miles. And we're very anxious to let him go out and document fuel economy and power and all these other things. Yes. And just overall drivability. Like at this point, almost every single thing that a person can go buy now, whatever their legal gross weight is, it, it'll dang near pull speed limit no matter what your legal speed limit is with whatever you're legally hauling. Yep. Uh, so these things almost all have enough power right out of the box. Yep. But the drivability is still not that awesome not, on yeah. most of this stuff. Yep. So we're really trying to focus on drivability. So when this guy lets out on the clutch, the truck doesn't want to shake the dashboard out to his speed. Mm. When he's just driving down the road at 15, 17 or RPM, it's very, very smooth, very, very yep. quiet. And uh, just an overall more enjoyable experience to drive. Yes. So what do you got that you want to show us in this fancy little box that you call your test in? Well, I mean, we can run this IXX15 and see a live rate shape graph here. Um, I already pre-graphed these injectors, so but we can we'll require this thing up and uh, just so you can see a live rate shape graph going here. The solenoid actuation time. So solenoid actuation time right here. Yep, more voltage you can see. Solenoid being told to shut off which we're doing a conditioning set, just purging all the air out of the injector before we actually start getting vinyl readings on that we're doing here. Uh, and a minute here, you will actually see this actuation time go a little bit further like we just did. Um, so now we're at a thousand US, which they're wrapping through down here. Uh, and then this green, this green line, that is so that that green line that's balancing, this green line that's balancing right here, Skylar, yeah, so this one that's actually moving, yep, through here is a live rate shape graph of this current injector, which this is actually this ink one here. So we can see the repeat repeatability of from when I graphed it earlier. So this other line, this other line, you've got about four different lines there. Yep, so we got like a red, a yellow, a pink, and a blue, which is injectors uh, like one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, vice yep. versa. This is the last one. This is this is a real big, so this one's lazy. This one's very lazy on shut off. So it looks pretty decent, but it, this one wants to stay open a little bit longer than the rest of these. Now, is this injector, I know that we talked about one injector pumping 127. We talked about another injector pumping 160 MN2. Which injector is this? This is the injector, no surprise, the one that's pumping 100, it would just do 158.9. So, so this is the heavy injector, which makes sense because it's sense. staying open a little bit longer. It's staying open longer. You're chasing the piston down yep. the hole even further. Now, by design, we're looking at this and we're thinking that Cummins engineers, when they put this thing together, they wanted these things to be with those other four or five. But we've got one that pumps 30 mm cubed more than the rest, and it's hanging out a little bit longer. That's so right. this is the kind of stuff that we're going to try and fix and dial in before we send these out. Yeah. And keep in mind, the customer was running these in his truck. Um, he had no complaints on them. He just he just wanted to, he wanted to try something new. Yeah, he wanted to try something new and he wanted a little more power. So then this is this is why we're doing this so inside the nozzle um and these these injectors do have a lot of miles on them so they've already done diesel fuel over time will in fact increase k factor and in free, increase the efficiency of the nozzle because so many gallons get pumped through there under such high pressure the fuel basically radiuses off the spray orifices but you've got an injector torn apart right now. Can I get you to throw that in the bore scope and we can yeah, take a look at that? And also we can go take a look at it real quick. Uh, the nozzle flow rate on these guys is what, 28, 29 liters? 29, 29, I flowed a few of them. Yeah, they range from 28, 29. So we'll 
Uh, when we modify these nozzles, clean them up, we'll balance these blow rates of the nozzles too. And that in theory should help us balance these injectors down here in the intestine even better too. And we're not looking to kill this guy's gas mileage. We're not, we're not looking to make this thing a hot rod. Nope. So we're going to take, let's just say 29 is the biggest one in this set. If we're going to end up moving these to 30 or maybe 31. If ideally what we're looking at is, uh, so there's like cavitation flow that happens inside of a nozzle and we want to get rid of the cavitation flow by increasing K factor, increasing the nozzle efficiency. And we want that to be more of a vortex flow in the nozzle. Yeah, that's correct. So we, whenever we, we EDM a nozzle, we can see that if we get the, the elevation in the nozzle incorrect, we see cavitation flow because they don't work. It, so we keep moving elevation up, elevation down. We find to where they pump really nice. And then we know we're getting our vortex flow out of that. Yeah. Since things are EDM'd prior to us, we don't have that option. Yep. So we've got to do what we can with just AFM or Strudhone to get this to be a vortex flow nozzle instead of a cantation. Yep. Plain and And uh, so that's something that as we're doing this recipe, we're going to learn. Like we're going to start with one, which is kind of why we had to buy one new injector. We're going to destroy one by doing it to the point where it's really, really good. And then we're going to go too far with it. And then you just, that's, that's a core. Uh, but when this gets done, we'll have a nice recipe, good driver. And this guy's going to let us know what he finds in drivability for sure. All right, let's take a look and see what you got. And we're going to add the bore scope, take a look inside this nozzle. So we see, did he tell you how many miles are on this set? I don't remember. I don't think he did. So it's, I mean, a semi truck average is going to be a hundred, 120,000 miles a year. So these things could have two or 300,000 miles on pretty easy. Yes. But what I'm seeing right there is the spray holes are, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, we got eight holes, hardly any K factor whatsoever. Yeah. They're very, very straight. And the looking in the pocket, like below the spray holes, there's, it's very porous. Yes. So that itself is not going to lend itself well to any sort of like creating a vortex. So under pressure, we're going to get these things to flow enough to make power, but the atomization is not going to be optimum and our burr is not going to be optimum. So I see a huge potential for cleaning this up and making yes. this a lot better part. Yeah. Well, we did see some other stuff back up in here and this guy had no complaints. No, nope. that's all like wax buildup and things like that. Now, when we get that orange garbage out of there, we're going to focus that. Sorry, bud. There we go. So when we get the AFM or the extrude home force through there, we're going to knock all that garbage oh, out yeah. of that up. Yep. So this nozzle is going to be kind of a reconditioned nozzle with a new purpose in life. It's going to be balanced up very, very well. And we're going to get the nozzle flow rate balanced within about 1%-ish. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about this project. So there's a lot of these trucks on the road. Lots. And a bunch of these guys, you know, with diesel particulate filter, you got to imagine what the DPF and the ECM is fighting with when they've got one injector that's contributing 30 millimeters, 30, or what is it? It's about 20% more yeah. fluid. So that one, that's, that's contributing 300 microseconds longer. Yeah. That one is firing the most amount of heat and the most amount of soot into the DPS. Right. So if a guy has a DPF on a truck, that injector itself is going to shorten the diesel particulate filter's life because it's, it's pumping fluid directly in there without cylinder pressure being there. Mm -hmm. It was exciting. Yeah. Good stuff. Really good stuff. Well, so this is going to be like stage one of a two to possibly three. Yep. So ISX 15 guys, pay attention. This is stage one, just introducing what we're up to. Uh, we've got more tools coming and when you're prepared, we'll do a stage two and possibly a stage three. Yeah. We'll do like a stage two, um, showing you what we did for the modifications and, and how the modifications work. And uh, we'll do new rate shape graphs to see that we got the, how the rate shapes compare from before to after. There's some pretty cool stuff that we've learned on that already with just trying to straighten out rate shape. Yes. Yep. So a lot to learn and rate shape really is a cool tool that not everybody has, but if you use it correctly and pay attention, you can really make a, a an engine per I'm very, very, very. Yeah. It's very key on getting the injectors to turn on and shut off at the exact same time. I like it quite a lot. Well, um, Skyler, you got anything else? 
Uh, I think that's it for part one. See you guys in part two. Let it read, Dynamite Diesel Products. Skylar Offert, Dynamite Diesel Products.